quiet Saturday morning and you hear a knock on your door. A nicely dressed man or woman with a book bag has a lovely Bible verse to share. Who are they? Of course, everyone knows they're Jehovah's Witnesses. This act is what they're known for. Now, you might be asking yourself, why are these people at my front door? Well, according to them, they are spreading the good news of the kingdom. It's the preaching work. Door-to-door knocking, letter writing, phone calls, or standing at the cart, all part of the essential preaching work. They say it was set up by the apostles and Jesus, and they're just following scripture. Is that true? First, let's just talk about preaching in general. Should Christians preach the good news? Yes, it's the Great Commission, the Lord's command. Go into the world and make disciples. Preach the good news in and out of season. How will they hear if no one tells them? Now, witnesses believe if they don't go preaching, they have blood guilt, and it's part of earning their salvation. Now, why that's not biblical is for another video. But here, I'm not talking about the why, but the how. This door-to-door thing, going into neighborhoods, walking to each house and knocking. Is that biblical? Jehovah's Witnesses have their proof texts, which are Matthew 10, 11 through 13, Acts 5, 42, and Acts 20, 20. But we must ask, do these verses really mean that? Matthew 10, 11 through 13. And whatever city or village you enter, inquire who is worthy in it, and stay at his house until you leave that city. As you enter the house, give it your greeting. If the house is worthy, you see that your blessing of peace has come upon it. If it is not worthy, take back your blessing of peace. This isn't door-to-door ministry. This is about going into a village, inquiring about hospitality, and staying with those who are receptive. Now, that seems odd to us, but reading in context, Matthew 10, 5 through 6, these 12 Jesus sent out after instructing them, saying, Do not go on a road to Gentiles and do not enter a city of Samaritans, but rather go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. As you go, preach, saying, The kingdom of heaven has come near. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse those with leprosy, cast out demons. Freely you've received freely give. Jesus is spreading the message. The 12 disciples are sent to different villages and performing miracles in the name of Jesus. This text is saying, go to your Jewish countrymen, perform miracles, proclaim the Messiah's coming, then ask around. Stay in the house of someone hospitable and receptive. Eat, sleep, pack up your stuff, and then head to the next village. Which makes total sense. You don't just start at a random house, knock on someone's door and say, Hey, you don't know me, but can I eat your food and sleep here tonight? No? Okay, well, I'll ask your neighbor. Now, a further look, Mark 6.10. This is the same account. Wherever you enter a house, stay there until you leave town. Last I checked, witnesses don't just call on one house and leave the area. What makes this even worse is Luke's account. Luke 10.7. Stay in that house, eating and drinking what they provide for the laborer is deserving of his wages. Do not move from house to house. Hmm. The words of Jesus himself. While in a village, do not go house to house. This is 100% confirming this isn't door-to-door ministry, but using people's homes as a place to recoup. This is the same account from Matthew 10. It just proves cherry-picking and ignoring other verses to make their preaching tactics look biblical. Okay, but what about Acts 5.42 and Acts 20.20? Well, here's what they say. And every day in the temple and from house to house, they did not stop teaching and preaching the good news of Jesus as the Christ. 20. How did I not shrink from declaring to you anything that was beneficial and teaching you publicly from house to house? First addressing 5.42. Every day in the temple and from house to house. See, when a witness sees this, they picture their current preaching work. But is this what's happening in the first century? No. He's either referring to the commission Jesus already issued, going to villages and staying in homes, or homes that were acting as the gathering place for the church. See, they didn't have buildings back then. The first wasn't built till around 300 AD in Jordan. Where else were the believers going to gather? Pliny the Younger, in his letter to Emperor Trajan in the 2nd century, said the Christians would gather at sunrise on a fixed day, sing songs to Christ, swear oaths of righteousness, then afterwards would assemble and eat. That's a normal thing, and it makes sense as this custom is laid out in Acts 2.44. And all the believers were together and had all things in common, and they would sell their property and possessions and share them with all, to the extent that anyone had need. Day by day, continuing with one mind in the temple and breaking bread from house to house, they were taking their meals together with gladness and sincerity of heart. All the believers gathered. Doing what? 
living righteously, having the same mind of Christ every day, and assembling, whether in the temple or house to house, and taking meals together in those locations as a body of believers. Acts 2.44 is setting up how the Christian congregation assembled. So when we see this in Acts 5 and 20, we know what Luke is telling us. Look at Acts 20.20. Paul is talking to the elders from Ephesus. You yourselves know from the first day that I set foot in Asia how I was with you the whole time, serving the Lord with all humility and with tears and trials which came upon me through the plots of the Jews. How I did not shrink from declaring to you anything that was beneficial and teaching you publicly and from house to house. So Paul's in Ephesus with these elders the whole time and teaching them publicly and house to house. From the JW perspective, why would he be teaching them house to house? Shouldn't they be teaching the homeowner? This has to be referring to places of congregation. So both of these verses are not a proof text about door-to-door ministry. Look, for the sake of argument, let's just pretend the witnesses are right. JWs would say, we're definitely the truth, because we do what the early church did. Okay, do you debate in public? Look at what Apollos was doing in Acts 18, 27 through 28, or Paul in Acts 19, 8 through 10. He's in the synagogue debating for three months. The last witness who did a public debate left the group and started his own cult. Witnesses don't debate because they're not allowed to. Look here from their own website. Rather with actions than words. Um, so what was Paul doing in the synagogue? Silent hand puppets? No, no! This is nonsense. He was arguing, reasoning with words, apologetics. He didn't just do a little dance or convert Jews because he was so nicely dressed and polite. Remember, who's Paul preaching to? Those who were opposers, accusers, actively trying to kill him. I know JWs will say, but witnesses are out in public. Cart witnessing. No, cart witnessing is not preaching, even if you call it that. Cart witnessing is standing by a magazine rack and telling people to go to a website for more information. Try and say Paul or any disciple set up a cart in the temple, stood there holding a brochure about the impending Armageddon. Yeah, that didn't happen. Look, even if we're supposed to go door to door, witnesses aren't the only one. Mormons do it, Baptists do it, and many more. If they say, well, we do it more than anyone else, therefore we're the true faith. Okay, let's say I start a church, and it grows and grows, and I have 10 million followers, and I make them all go do door knocking. More than witnesses. Am I now the truth? It's self-fulfillment. It doesn't logically work. This is just JW leadership saying, everyone go door to door. And you have to, otherwise you can't get in paradise earth. You've got to earn it, so out you go. Remember, the true religion would be known by its fruits, like everyone going door to door. Oh look, that's us. What a coincidence. Look, if you want to go up and down a neighborhood door knocking, be my guest. I don't think God has an issue with it. It's just not the only way, nor the most effective. The global Christian church has consistently outgrown Jehovah's Witnesses, and the majority don't go door knocking and haven't throughout history. Why would God say, only spread my name in a certain way that's not very effective? No, the command is go, love people, and that love translates into many different ways and works. The Great Commission is going out and sharing the name of Jesus. Does he care if you open a soup kitchen and preach to the homeless, or start a women's shelter and share the gospel with victims of domestic violence? He wants people spreading the good news, whether that's public debating or sharing Christ to your neighbor or bringing your friends to church. The point is, there's a lot of ways to share the gospel and give hope. You don't confine the work of Christ. You do whatever you can to reach people. The message is go. Go tell the world that Christ has risen. Death is defeated. Hope is real. Grace is available to anyone who repents and puts their trust in the person and work of Christ. Look, the good news message should never be regulated and limited. It's far too important.